Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about the recent discovery of another planet very close to our solar system. This is a planet known as Barnard Star B and today I'm going to tell you what we know about this and also talk a little bit more about what kind of a planet it might be. Now let's actually begin by exploring where exactly this particular star system and this actual planet are located. First of all, um, you may have read in one of the news uh, reports that this is one of the closest star to us, but some uh, media sources mention that this is actually the second closest star. And although technically this could be seen as the second closest star, it's not entirely true. Mostly because if you look at the map of nearby stars, you'll see something that looks like this. And right here, we have a system of Alpha Centauri AB and Proxima Centauri. This is actually three stars right there. And these are the closest stars to us, making Barnard star the fourth closest star to us. So in that sense, it's actually a lot more accurate to say that this is the closest single star to us. But that's just the semantics. And in terms of the actual distances from the sun, this is about six light years, or just under six light years. Uh, you could actually see this star with a relatively cheap telescope. And so if you were to actually try to find this particular star, um, you would see a very dim um, red dwarf, very similar to Proxima Centauri. So this is what's known as a red dwarf star. And I've actually discussed the star um, in a video from last year, where um, I covered some of the more specific details about Barnard star. But today we're going to focus on the planet. Now it doesn't really have a name yet, a proper name that is. Um, just like the star itself, it's just named Barnard star B. But the thing is, uh, there are a lot of objects in the universe named after Barnard. There's actually a galaxy named Barnard as well, and even a nebula, uh, because uh, Edward Barnard was actually one of the most prolific astronomers um, in the US, and one of the most prolific astronomers of early 20th century. Without going into too much detail, uh, this astronomer right here was actually responsible for some of the coolest observations of early 20th century. But what do we know about the actual planet? Well, first of all, not much. As a matter of fact, this planet was a mystery to us uh, for one single reason. It wasn't really a direct observation. The way that this planet was discovered is absolutely brilliant. We had to use data from about 20 years of observations of this star. And using this data, scientists noticed that there was an unusual behavior around the star. Actually, what they saw was that the star itself was actually kind of changing a little bit, not in its luminosity, but in colors. Once in a while, it would actually become a little bit more red, and once in a while, it would become more blue. In other words, it was redshifted and blue shifted by something in this star system. And this was enough for the astronomers to actually realize that it was most likely a planet, a very unique and very specific planet, a planet that today we refer to as a super Earth. In other words, an object that's about 3 or 3.2 masses of our own planet Earth, although we don't really know the actual size because we didn't really see the planet. But we also know that this planet has a very unique and very eccentric orbit and has also very extreme um, climate changes due to very extreme seasons. So it's definitely not a type of a planet we would probably find ourselves surviving on. And simply based on observations we have so far, we believe that this is most likely a frozen ice world, very similar in a sense to the moon of Saturn known as Titan. My favorite moon, by the way. So in a sense, this world right here is most likely similar to a mega titan, a world full of various ices. Water here is probably um, the largest component, although it's possible that there's other stuff here, like CO2, methane, ethane, and so on. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a very high chance it's a lot like Titan, even in its presence of atmosphere. But just like Titan, it's going to be very, very cold here. We think that the temperature here is around minus 150 degrees. But unless this world has a very thick atmosphere, it's definitely not going to be anything less than minus 100 degrees Celsius. So very, very chilly. And the reason it's so cold here is because this world is actually relatively far from its parent star. 
because its parent star is not producing that much light, uh, only about 3% of the light of our own sun, obviously this planet is not going to get as much heat. The distance here is about the same as the distance of Mercury to the sun, but the amount of light is very minuscule. Most of the light that this particular planet gets is actually ultraviolet light. So if I were to stand on the surface of this planet, this is actually what I would see. It would be extremely, extremely dark. You can barely see anything here. It would be always dark, even in essentially what would be an equivalent of noon with a lot of daylight uh, on this planet. But luckily for us, this planet is one of the closest exoplanets we've discovered. As a matter of fact, it's the second closest exoplanet after Proxima Centauri b. And this implies that we'll be able to study this object in uh, the next few years with some of the future telescopes that will be able to actually see this directly. And this will allow us to understand what the composition of this planet is, but also what the atmosphere here is. And depending on what, what atmosphere it has, it might actually be even warmer than we anticipate. And let's now go to Universe Sandbox and try to recreate this particular uh, system. And I just wanted to show you what the orbit of this planet looks like and what the average temperature will be like on this object if we actually consider that this is a Titan-like planet. So here is the Barnard Star. As you can see, um, it's a lot less warm than our own sun. It's only about 3000 degrees Celsius. And um, in comparison to our own sun, this is what the size is. It's actually really tiny. Let's take a planet and place it here in the orbit um, that we've discovered. So this is what its orbit looks like, and this is what potentially this planet may look like as well. And if you look at the orbit um, and just compare its shape at least, it is very, very similar to the orbit of Mercury. It has a very high eccentricity of about 0.32, similar to Mercury, and um, it moves at around the same distance. But obviously it takes much longer because the star, Berner star, doesn't have as much mass as our Sun. Now for this reason, um, the temperature here is going to be relatively cold. As you can see, at its closest, it gets to maybe minus 150, 160, and at its farthest, as cold as minus 180. But that's without atmosphere. Let's make an assumption that there is a little bit of atmosphere here. Let's basically give it as much atmosphere as Titan has on its surface. And in that case, the temperature goes down to anywhere between minus 130 to, I think the warmest here is about minus 78. That's really not that good for the survival of human beings, obviously, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to, to find some kind of an exotic, strange, cold love in life here. As a matter of fact, Antarctica has plenty of bacteria that loves living in the cold. So we can't really discredit this and say that there's no life and there's no way to have habitable conditions here. We still don't really know anything about this planet to make any assumptions. Really, the only thing we know is that its orbit is eccentric, and its mass is about 3.2 masses of Earth. And because we think this is an ice-like object, it's an, possibly an ice planet, its radius um, compared to radius of Earth is maybe about 2, maybe 3 radii of Earth. We don't really have any detail just yet. And the way that I generated this planet right now, it seems to even have a gravitational field lower than Earth because of its size and because of its low density. So depending on the conditions present here and really depending on what this planet is made out of, it could be completely different from what I've created here. For all we know, this could be a very large, very frozen bowl of ice. So there's really nothing we can add to this other than we definitely now need follow-up studies. But to me, what was incredible is, of course, how this object was discovered. And the brilliancy here was observing the minute changes in the uh, actual velocity of Barnard star. If you run uh, the simulation here, you'll see how once in a while the speed of the star decreases just a little bit. But because the orbit of this planet is, well, practically 233 days, you actually need to observe this particular star for several years to notice any difference. And this is exactly what happened. We needed to have 20 years of observations to try to figure this out. 
To me, this actually creates an opportunity for a completely new way of finding these planets, exoplanets, and this also means that in the next few years, a similar technique could be used to discover even more exoplanets near us. We do need to have very, very uh, specific and very detailed observations of every one of those stars, because the changes in velocity here are only about 3 to 4 meters per second. That's practically nothing. And the only way to see those observations is to actually continuously look at the star and to realize that once in a while the star has a little bit of a redshift and a little bit of a blue shift. And that's actually kind of challenging. But I think with modern telescopes and obviously with modern techniques of finding exoplanets, we'll definitely start discovering even more stars that have exoplanets in our neighborhood. There's quite a lot of them out there. And I think my biggest hope is that we'll actually discover something really amazing around Alpha Centauri A sometime soon. Alpha Centauri A is of course the nearest star to us that's very sun-like and discovering an exoplanet around it would be absolutely incredible. But until then, this is all I wanted to mention in this video. I guess it's great news that we discovered yet another close exoplanet to us, but most likely not the future home for the human race. Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space, and maybe even come back tomorrow to learn about another amazing discovery that we made recently. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me a lot. Space out, and as always, bye bye.